In video gaming, Pac-Man clones are unauthorized versions of Namco's popular maze chase arcade game Pac-Man or games that wholesale borrow the design of Pac-Man. The combined sales of counterfeit arcade machines sold nearly as many units as the original Pac-Man, which had sold more than 300,000 machines. Like the original game, Pac-Man clones typically have the goal of clearing a maze of dots while eluding deadly adversaries. When special dots are eaten, the protagonist can chase and consume the pursuers for a brief period. Clones may vary the audio, visual theme, use different maze layouts, slightly tweak features, or even invert elements such as filling the maze rather than emptying it, but they have the same general feel of Pac-Man. <laughs> Arcade clones Lock in Chase was developed and published by Data East in Japan in 1981, and was later published in North America by Taito. The game was later licensed to Mattel who produced the Intellivision and Atari 2600 home console versions in 1982 1, 2, and an Apple II version in January 1983 3. Here, Pac-Man was replaced with a thief stealing coins from a bank vault. The ghosts were replaced with police, and the thief could temporarily block passages with doors. Mighty Mouth was a game by A1 Machines that District Court Judge Warren Keith Urbaum described as, "...for all practical purposes, identical to Pac-Man." Among the similarities cited were the color and shape of the player character and ghosts, the maze configurations, the sound effects, the paths of the characters in the attract mode and the paths of the characters in both the attract mode and a game where the player does not move. Midway, owners of the Pac-Man copyrights, were granted summary judgment for copyright and trademark infringement in 1983. Contemporary home system clones Ghost Hunter from Arcade Plus is a 1981 clone for the Atari 8-bit family that plays the Twilight Zone theme at the start of the game. KC Munchkin, is a 1981 release in the official line of games for the Magnavox Odyssey Squared. It is very heavily based on Namco's 1980 arcade game Pac-Man, but not a direct clone. It was however, similar enough for Atari to sue Philips and force them to cease production of Munchkin. In 1982, an appellate court found that Philips had copied Pac-Man and made alterations that "...only tend to emphasize the extent to which it deliberately copied the plaintiff's work." The ruling was one of the first to establish how copyright law would apply to the look and feel of computer software. Scarfman is a 1981 Pac-Man clone for the monochrome TRS-80 computers. Catchem is a text-only Pac-Man clone for Kpro's early line of luggable home computers. It was created by Yahoo Software and released in 1982 and 1983. Because the early Kpro's did not have graphics capability, this clone used dashes and various punctuation marks to construct a maze. The letter A served as ghosts and the fruits were replaced by dollar signs. The Pac-Man was a letter C which went from upper to lower case, intermittently, to simulate a chomping Pac-Man. A major downside of the game was that early Kpros were not able to flip text characters. As a result, the Catchem Pac-Man was always facing right, even when chomping pills on its left. Hungry Horus is a 1982 Pac-Man clone for the ZX Spectrum. Munch Man is a 1982 clone from Texas Instruments for the TI-99, 4A home computer. Instead of clearing a maze, the player fills it with links in Munchman parlance. A change made by TI to avoid possible lawsuits. Snack Attack is a 1982 clone for the Apple II written by Dan Olowski and published by Datamost. It became a top-selling game for the Apple II. Snapper for the BBC Micro and Acorn Electron were faithful clones of the Namco arcade game Pac-Man. Released by Acornsoft in 1982. In development, the game was titled Puck Man the first Japanese title of the arcade game was Puck Man but the name was changed before release to avoid legal action. However, the initial release of the game was so close to Pac-Man including the design of the game's characters that this version had to be withdrawn and re-released with the characters changed. The player's character became a round yellow face with very short legs wearing a green cowboy hat and the ghosts became skinny humanoid monsters. 
Taxman for the Apple II is a Pac-Man clone programmed by Brian Fitzgerald and other students from La Sierra High School. Atari sued Fitzgerald and he sold the port to Atari which they ended up selling as a licensed version of the game. Jelly Monsters for the Commodore VIC-20 is a faithful port of Namco's Pac-Man by HAL Laboratory who had the home computer rights to Namco's games in Japan at the time, but when the games were released in North America, the names were changed to avoid legal issues with Atari, Inc. who had the home computer rights in North America to Jelly Monsters for the VIC-20 which was published by Commodore International, Atari ended up suing HAL and Commodore anyway and won the lawsuit, Atari pulled off HAL's VIC-20 port and released their own version. Version. After the lawsuit HAL sold the Japanese home computer rights to Dempa who ended up porting the game to many home computers in Japan, this excluded the MSX version of the game of which Namco ported themselves under their Namco branding. Devil World for the Famicom is a Pac-Man clone designed by Shigeru Miyamoto Jawbreaker for the Atari 8-bit family re-themed the gameplay, winning a Best Action Game Award in 1983 and later forming a section of Stephen Levy's book, Hackers. Atari threatened to sue the publishers, Sierra Online, but this simply made them mad and they released the game anyway. They won the ensuing lawsuit. See also List of Maze video games <laughs>